Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I am Abe with Mystic Chenmara, a small town mystic from the middle of Idaho. And tonight I would like to offer the elemental energy reading for the month of February for the element of Earth, which covers Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn in the Zodiac. And if you're interested in why I read for the elements instead of the Zodiac, you, there's a video linked in the description. You can check that out. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button, drop a like on the video if you enjoy this type of content, and comment and let me know what your thoughts are, if these readings resonate for you, um, <laughs> and any ways that I can maybe improve as we go along. We will start off with looking at the I Ching hexagram, which I have cast beforehand, so we're just ready to start in with that. And then we'll go through each week of February looking at the tarot and oracle cards, and I read intuitively, so the messages that come through may not be the same as what's on the card, um, and we'll get into the tarot here in a second. But we'll start with the I Ching, and the Earth hexagram for February of 2024 is hexagram 64, before completion. So this is where we're at. We're not quite finished, is what it says. <laughs> before completion, success. Before the little fox has quite completed its crossing of the ice its tail gets wet no goal or destination is favorable right now what this is saying is this is a time to just kind of take a breath look around see what's going on success is there it's available to you it's, it's ahead <laughs> but before its tail gets wet no goal or destination is favorable this is a time to look at where you're at where you're standing how far it is to your goal are the things that you've been working on really where you're supposed to be is there something that needs to be shored up so this is a hurry up and wait <laughs> to quote some of my old firefighter days this is a hurry up and wait situation is what i'm getting so we'll start with the bottom line our foundational line here its tail gets wet disgrace so things might be coming up and you may have a lot of opportunities and when it says its tail gets wet disgrace there's things that are becoming of known to you and you don't know how to handle them so you kind of pull back you're not really sure is what the um, implications are so this is again talking about that there's a lot of things that are opening up for you a lot of doors that are becoming available and what I'm hearing and what they're saying here is its tail gets wet this could be a time where you might slip up a little bit because you make the wrong decision. This is where that pause comes in for you guys this coming month. And they're saying this is the first part of the month. Um, the second line is, he breaks the wheel of the chariot. Righteous persistence brings good fortune. The wheel of the chariot in the tarot is driving forward. And when you break the wheel of the chariot, righteous persistence brings good fortune. You're slowing things down. You're coming to a halt because some things need to be worked on. You're not saying that you're not going to continue with your project, but what it's saying is this is, again, the calling in that energy, slowing it down a little bit, making sure everything is all right. You broke the wheel because it was probably wobbly and needs to be repaired anyway. So, again, getting that energy in, showering up the goals, making sure what you're working on is headed in the right direction if you need to adjust, what I'm hearing is February is the month to do your adjusting. So, your third place line, the crossing is incomplete, so to advance now would be would bring misfortune, yet it will be advantageous to cross the great river or sea. Just because you have to take a minute and pause now doesn't mean to stop focusing on the goal. Doesn't mean that your goal is wrong. It's saying, um, where to go? <laughs> to advance now to would bring misfortune, meaning you're crossing a great lake or sea, river. And you have to wait till it's frozen up to cross it safely or until it's completely thawed to cross it safely. Again, you're aimed in the right direction. Things are available. Pay attention to what is in front of you because your next steps may need to be delayed for a little bit. So it's not saying you're not going to achieve. It's not saying you're not going to get there. It's saying, take a breath, hold up, just examine what's going on. 
So our fourth place line, persistence in a righteous course brings reward and regret vanishes. The subjugation of the land of Kwai involves tremendous activity, but at the end of three years, great territories were bestowed upon the successful generals. Being persistent is what gets what you're after. The, you know, being persistent, slow and steady, you get there safely, you get there soundly. It might take a little bit longer, and that's what they're saying, like the end of three years, great territories were bestowed upon successful generals. It's not saying you're not going to get there. It's just saying <laughs> right now is the best time to slow down and adjust. If things need to be fixed, if your attention is maybe a little bit distracted, see what else is going on that's a distraction, work through that, and then return to your goal. It's not a time for rushing forward. And they're really saying, Earth, this is kind of your energy anyway. You want to know what your next step is before you take it, so stay grounded and staying balanced. So for our fifth place line, we have persistence in a righteous course brings good fortune and absence of regret. The luster of the superior man wins people's confidence, hence the good fortune. When you stay focused on a goal and you're working towards it, the persistence in righteous courses brings good fortune and no regrets. This is where you're, you get, you, everyone can see that you have this goal. You're moving towards it quite successfully. You know when to take the pause. You know when to step forward. Right now is the pause time. This makes you kind of shine. And with the way the universe is lining up galactically, there's a lot of shining coming in right now. So, um, But it says the luster of the superior man wins confidence, hence good fortune. People know they can trust because of how you live your life, how you achieve your goals, how you work through situations. They know they can trust that you're not going to do something that's going to put them in a bad place. And that's that good fortune. People will support you when things start moving again because you're making the right adjustments and you're taking the right actions in this moment. So our capstone here, those in whom the people repose their trust may feast themselves without doing wrong. If they allow their heads to get wet, they will forfeit that trust. Being hot-headed, being angry, the people around you, if they start getting pushy, they start getting aggressive, they start frothing type energy, let them go. <laughs> it is not good in your situation to have those people around because they are not going to be beneficial. They're seeing your growth and the people who can trust and you can keep around you. They see your growth and they understand this is what, how we do this. So we're going to support this person. When they get their head wet, that means they are pushing too fast. They've slipped and fallen in the water. You're standing back going, whoa, let's look at this a little bit broader picture. And when they rush forward into, well, I know how we're going to do this. We're going to go this direction, and then they face plant. So those people are going to be a little bit less friendly once they trip. That's their karma. That's their situation. Just understand you are paying attention to the signs and symbols coming up and know that this next month or so is a time of stepping back, observing, knowing when to take the next step. So we'll move into the tarot readings and the oracle card. Uh, I read for the first, or for the, <laughs> a guide or guardian, a message from source, and then we look at a lesson or a challenge from the tarot. There's about four weeks in February, and we're starting the week cycle on, I don't have the right calendar, the fourth. <laughs> so, because January is kind of carried into the first part of February. So we'll start this for the fourth. And... Each week when I say guide or guardian, it's depending on the energy that you need. Sometimes the, the cards I'm using will be to help guide you through the week, something you're working on, something that comes in, guard you against outside forces you may not be aware of. Um, the message from source is positive reassurance or affirmation supporting you. The lesson or challenge from the tarot is something that may come up this week as a challenge, or it could be a journaling thing to work on as a lesson. But as we go along, we'll... Um, 
go through all of those. So <laughs> if you're interested in any of the decks I'm using, they are linked in the description down below, as well as the tarot or the I Ching book. And then there's a kit there as well. If you're interested in that, you can check that out and clicking through those links helps support the channel. So just <laughs> something to look into. Uh, your first guide or guardian for the first week of February Earth energy is manifestation. The angels of manifestation come in to help support you in your goals and endeavors. With the way the I Ching was talking, these are the angels that help you shore up the things that need to be shorn up. These are the ones that help you know when to take this next step. So the angels are actually supporting you in your goals, especially this first week, but they're saying, let's look at things in the right time. Divine timing is so far beyond our mortal comprehensions that a lot of times we feel like nothing's happening. Setting things up within our own consciousness, setting our energy field to match what we're after, even if we don't have it yet, you match a frequency. When that frequency is matched, it starts to draw in the proper uh, energy. And the manifestation angels are saying, you've done a lot of prep work you've gotten a lot of things rolling in the right direction now is the time to make any mental adjustments to really work through anything that may be coming up because the manifestations are coming and are you ready that's <laughs> that was one of my guides it was like are you ready for this because it's coming in whether you want it or not get your basically get ready so your goals are coming to fruition as the big part of that let's look at what the what source has to say the message from source and this is my gratitude oracle that I'm using tonight today whenever you see this and it is open-minded number three source is saying don't get locked into a pattern of this is the only way things can work that will stop you from achieving what the manifestation angels are helping you manifest Earth tends to be very structured, very formal. This is how we go. Not always, but that tends to be the energy. There's a very much orderly day-to-day -day with Earth energy. Open-minded says be okay and be open to the more chaotic ways of things, the surprises, the mystery that comes through life. If life was so easy to plan out and dictate and you just took the next step because that's what was scheduled, how much fun would that be? Would you really enjoy it? Or is it kind of those new, exciting, like, ooh, that was cool, let's try that again, and something different happens? That's more of the energy of what's coming up for this coming month. When you're taking that breath and you're pausing, you're becoming more open-minded, and that allows the universe to work in ways you may never have considered before. And that sounds weird, but I personally have had those experiences, and when they did come in, you're guides will be out sitting there or your angels will be sitting there tapping you on the shoulder being like i told you so <laughs> so everything comes in in the right way and in the right time and when you're open-minded and you're looking at it from the broader perspective the it becomes very logical when it shows up you're like of course it came that direction that's the only way it could have showed up my goal was over here but that was the gateway to bringing it in so something to think about as you're going forward but this is just the first week <laughs> your lesson or challenge is the aid of summer the desire for more meaningful life realizing it's time to move on choosing to make major life changes the lesson here is just because things are not working the way you thought they would it doesn't mean you have to drop everything and change when you're looking for a more meaningful life find the meaning where you're at when you do that, it allows you to see that there maybe you do need to make some big changes, but it also allows you to see maybe where you're at isn't a physical change. Maybe it's a mental change. Maybe it's a spiritual change. So this eight of summer is talking about changes in life, but you have a very strong uh, energy coming in of being more open-minded, seeing things from different perspectives, working with manifestation angels, the Eight of Summer is saying, when you do that, are you ready? Are you ready for the change? Are you ready for the time to move on from old patterns? Are you time to make those major mental shifts into something more positive, more forward-focused, more growth-oriented? So 
things to think about for the first week of February. Let's look at the second week, guide or guardian. And we have self-acceptance angels. These are the angels that help you work with self-confidence. They help you grow as a person, as a soul. And when the self-confidence angels, uh, self-acceptance angels come in, when you start looking at things from the first week, manifestations, opening your mind, allowing some changes to happen, it can shake how you feel about yourself. And these angels are like, no, no, it's all right. This needs to happen so you can release the parts of you that don't work. And that doesn't mean that they're bad. It's just you have goals going a certain direction. And let's say you're wanting to become an entrepreneur and you want to start your own business. But if you have the mindset of I can only make money through working for someone else, you are holding yourself back. You're not accepting the fact that you're growing into something new. Now, the self-acceptance comes into shifting that viewpoint from I always have to make money from working from someone else to I make money doing what I love and as I do so it brings in stuff from other people so in the bigger scheme you can adjust your thought pattern to I'm still working but I'm working to benefit myself by helping other people versus I'm working to benefit a company by doing the same thing so <laughs> that self-acceptance is helping you understand that as you grow you're not really changing dramatically you might be but you're changing your viewpoints your ability to process it mentally and they're saying when you accept yourself where you're at it makes it easier to grow forward when the new stuff starts to come in so let's look at your last message from source nature's beauty it might be a little chilly it is here in the northern areas where <laughs> you just it's been warm the last week, but it doesn't mean that that's going to stay. That's a false spring. We have them every year. Nature's beauty comes in mystery. If you've ever planted a garden or you've ever watched to um, start planting, planting a garden, growing a garden, if you've ever worked with any animal husbandry, there's a lot of things that trigger the mystery. You have plants. My calves are going to drop this time of the year. That's because that's when we set this, the bowl in there. This is how we scheduled it. You always have that one that drops like three months early. Why? Or you always have the one that's like, oh, this kid's not coming out of me until May when you plan for February. That's nature doing what she does. Nature's beauty is in the mysterious. When you look at the mountain ranges when you look at the fields of flowers or the grasses and you see that waving thing just from the wind it's impossible they've tried and they've gotten pretty close I will give them that it's impossible to match that nature's beauty is mysterious nature's beauty is accepting you accept it accepts itself no matter what and that's the message from source tying into your um, guide is self-acceptance when you accept nature as it is when you see it for the beauty, sometimes terror, but the beauty most of the time, you understand that that mystery is the beauty. If you could organize it, if you could order it, it doesn't always work out the way you want. For example, when you plant your garden and you plant everything very strictly, very same rows every single year, three, four years in, your crop disappears. The plants are still there, but nothing's coming off of them because too much of the same breeds sick ground. And if you <laughs> won't go into all the planting and stuff, but when you're not mixing things up, when you're not looking at things from new viewpoints, when you're not changing the pattern, even just a little bit, things become stagnant growth stops. Self-acceptance says we are here to help you accept where you're at, but that also means accepting the future self. Nature in her, her purest form is kind of chaotic <laughs> but that's the beauty of that so the second week is helping you understand a bit more about the changes that are coming in that you can't always plan and organize but you can accept how the universe is conspiring in your favor your lesson or challenge is a major arcana card and this actually is a good way to sum up the se second week it is the strength card the grace and inner strength needed to overcome challenges, the power of kindness and forgiveness, time to embrace how wonderful you really are. The strength card has a lion and a lamb. 
self-control is huge and earth tends to want to be in more self-control but the strength comes into knowing when it's time to act even when the world is pushing you to say do it now do it now do it now if your gut instinct is like eh, not quite ready yet give me a second follow that <laughs> and you have the self-acceptance you have nature's beauty there's chaos but there's order within it but you don't always see the patterning that occurs there the strength is knowing when to act when to step back and really understanding that this all happens to help you grow as a person and as a soul accepting yourself accepting that mystery watching how nature unfolds they don't nature doesn't as a rule force anything it just happens there are avalanches and mudslides and all that kind of chaos but for the most part the flower doesn't have to work to bloom the bulb doesn't have to work to grow the tree doesn't labor to produce fruit it just happens and that's the beauty of nature is when you start to realize things happen in the right time you be accept the patterning and yourself that's the strength to know there's times to let the universe just have it I've done this much you take it wherever we need to go next so <laughs> um, hopping into our third week we have healing energy angels as your guides and guardians things can be a little bit hectic the I Ching talked about this being a little bit of a struggle at times because you don't want to move forward or you don't want to stop moving forward I should say the healing energy angels are coming in to say this is a time for your growth growth can be a little uncomfortable taking that rest period from the active pushing forward part is what's necessary right now the healing energy is coming in to help support you in you've been going you've been running things have been going great that's amazing but you're maybe pushing a little bit more than you should and the healing and energy angels are coming in to say self-care is just as important as the next active step so take some self-care this third week especially um, I mean always have some self-care set aside whether it's a bath whether it's curling up with a good book having some nice warm tea however you choose to relax but the healing energies this third week this is a good time to really emphasize that so and you have the angel and excuse me you have the angelic support during this third week as well and if you look at the card closely it's not just spiritual healing there's some physical healing because you have the catechist right here or caduceus or however you want to call it it is the symbol of health it's the two serpents intertwined around a staff you'll see it in a lot of medical establishments at least you're used to and it's also a healing element implement used at times by Archangel Raphael as well as some of the other healing angels this is their emblem so you have a lot of healing and growth that's coming forward here and it could be physical it could be emotional it could be spiritual but this third week is really about that self-care giving your time giving yourself time to rest which allows for healing and growth your message from source is imagination when we tap into our imagination it allows us to relax the body the mind gets to play it gets to grow when you look at the image here what thoughts come to your mind what images are you seeing Josephine wall is the one who painted this stuff and she loves to hide images within a painting every picture of hers has hidden images hidden hidden meanings and this deck in particular is like what do you want to grow what are you grateful for when you're working with the healing energies you want to tap into your imagination when you do that you're activating a part of your mind that for the most part doesn't do much it helps with dreams and things like that but when you are in a healing state where you're relaxing and your mind just wanders imagine your future imagine the best possible outcomes not the steps to that just the outcome allow your goals to just play across the images in your the screen in your mind and really enjoy filling in the spots that are like let's, let's add a little bit more to that maybe I want to move that over here adjust as you go but this third week let yourself relax allow your mind to wander to your goals and see them as they're finished as a completed thing and then you can 
you know tweak it and adjust it and have all that fun making sure it's what you're actually wanting is it quite there yet do I need to add something that's what we're working on in this third week so your lesson or challenge from the tarot is the Prince of Summer romantic captivating dramatic flirtatious falling in love suddenly being swept off your feet the need to stay grounded during an emotional experience earth doesn't really tend to go towards the fanciful you're being called this week to not mother everything not to constantly monitor when you work with healing energies and you work with imagination it's calling you to relax have fun don't be lazy so to speak but you don't have to always herd things along earth's energy is the hearth and the home the everyday the practical in the tarot it's the um, pentacles or coins so you're really focused on the daily the structure the everything has to be in its place this third week let things set, just kind of go not go to you know go to that place but just let things kind of flow a little bit more tap into a more of an emotion state I'm hearing a lot of focus on water energy so you're more fluid you're going with the flow you're enjoying more relaxed things uh, you're letting your emotions step forward a little bit more earth doesn't like those but <laughs> this third week that's part of that self-healing that um, working with your imagination when you work with your imagination your emotions are triggered big time so this week is really about getting a little bit more flirtatious a little bit more captivating maybe even a little more dramatic because the Prince of Summer is a challenge to you. Can you do that? Can you have a little bit more fun? Can you be a little bit more dramatic? Um, a little flirtatious, even if you're already in a relationship, do something spontaneous for the other person that they wouldn't expect. Just something cutesy, something fun, relaxing. Send the kids to grandma's house, <laughs> however that manifests, but really work on that this third week. So let's look at the last week of February for our Earth friends. And we have Holy Love. This fourth week, the angels coming in are helping you understand the concept of agape, the love of everything at its core. That doesn't mean you have to love everything up front, because trust me, that's impossible. But when you start to really tap into that heart energy, that heart chakra, third eye crown connection that occurs with agape love, it allows you to see things in a broader perspective, understanding there's a plan to it, and you don't have to be responsible for everything. And for Earth, that is a really big one because you do want to take care of people. You feel it's your divine duty to monitor, to maintain, and support. And to a point it is, don't get me wrong, but when you look at things from the broad perspective, you realize your actions help, but there's a lot more than just what you're doing. And that's the holy love, that divine aspect of love opens your heart to compassion, opens your heart to being able to see the broader pictures. So let's see what Source has to add to that. I'm getting ch chills right now. so. <laughs> something just fell <laughs> your message from source is presence when you're present in the moment you're able to understand the now it allows that holy divine aspect of yourself your connection to God's source divine energy to blossom to grow when you are pre in presence in divine presence the light shines from your heart everyone notices and I do mean everyone notices when you tap into that centered space it doesn't matter what else is going on the I Ching talks about people around you might be trying to push you or carrying on getting a little aggressive they're the ones that trip up you are in the now you are in the holy love energy that allows you to shine just like it talked about with the I Ching the superior man's luster other people are drawn to it this is what they're talking about this month has been a very very growth oriented but it's growth through rest so by the end of the month things are gonna start picking up is what I'm feeling from this but the rep most of the month is about just kind of reconnecting with your family with yourself 
slowing down the forward advance because you've been on the march <laughs> and that's a good thing but even a marching army needs to take a break so let's see what your lesson or challenge is from the tarot we have the nine of summer as i said things are moving forward uh wishes coming true dreams fulfilled and a magical time of life the guides are really pushing the word time this is a time where things are going to start opening up this month is about reconnecting settling in really focusing on the growth inner growth this last week you're tapping in you're living in the now you are now shining and radiating out because the movement forward is about to start rolling again so the nine of summer is saying you're almost to the completion of your goals you had the rest period she was preparing the fairy godmother here is preparing her for her next step your fairy godmother or however and your guides and guardians took this month to help you get ready for the next step you're almost at the end point and they're saying this is a reward for the things that you've been working on basically this month is take a breath say goodbye to the old the news coming in get your mind and heart ready for what's coming because you have a pretty big successful period coming forward and they're they're saying in this particular moment this is a um, success that moves forward over the next three to four months so even if next month's reading is a little different, what they're saying is what's been building up is going to be a big picture success that you've been doing, not just a once one week thing. So hopefully these messages are resonating for you guys. Um, with that, this is your February Earth Elemental Intuitive Reading. Uh, hit the like button if you enjoyed this content. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below and I will see you in the next video.